Hi everyone. Welcome to this video on number two on the three biggest things keeping you from playing your best. I'm Lee Pearson, founder of Music Minus Pain, an injury prevention specialist for musicians. And no, I am not a cat. If I were a cat, my body would be different and I would move differently, right? Yes. My video, okay. Now I'm no longer a cat, I'm me. Hi Bevan, hi Kia. So nice to see you guys. Do you ever feel like you're not able to play your best? Or your performance is inconsistent or unreliable? Or like you get to a lesson or rehearsal or a performance and you can't seem to play things as well as you did at home, but you're not sure why? Or maybe you thought you had a passage down one day, but the next day you couldn't play it well at all. So I'd love to hear if you can type in the chat, what happens to you when this kind of thing shows up? And hi Didier, is it Didier? Didier, Didier, nice to see you. Well, this week I'm doing a special series of videos on the three major things I see in musicians of all levels, all instruments, including singers, that keep us from playing or singing the way we want. And what I'm teaching this week are not really details, but some bigger picture things, things that are common to all musicians from the perspective of body mapping. And if you'd like some great tips on how to overcome what's holding you back, stick around and check out the videos this week. Yesterday, we talked about how a narrow focus can inhibit our ability to be expressive. So if you missed it, it's still posted here in this group, Born Free, Playing Freer. But today, I wanna to share with you some ideas about what I think is the second most important thing. And that is understanding how our bodies work to create music easily, efficiently, and expressively. And as a preview, yesterday I asked you to draw your understanding of your breathing structures. Why? Because how you understand them to work will affect your ability to breathe. But this is not a video on breathing. I have others of those up on Facebook. Instead, that's just one example of what I'm talking about today. And in relation to being a cat, yes, if I were a cat, things would be different about my body and I would have a different understanding and it wouldn't be intellectual, it would be intuitive, right? Because I wouldn't be thinking about it. So let me give you a little bit of context here. If you were a professional athlete, and some of you may be, would you be trained in how your body works? In what exactly you need to do to perfect your pitch or your serve or your run? Well, of course, you'd get constant coaching on that throughout your career and things would be changing during your career. You wouldn't always be doing exactly the same things because your body changes, your situation changes. Well, here's the thing. Musicians' careers last much longer than athletes. But were you trained in how your feet affect your bow arm or how to keep your neck free of tension or how your breathing is connected to the pelvic floor. I bet you didn't have that in your drawing. Or how the way you use your abdominal muscles can affect your tonguing, or even how texting can impinge on the nerves to your hands and can cause hand injury. So these are only a few of the examples of how our lack of or incorrect information about how our body works can limit our playing and singing. Yesterday, I was working with a violinist who was having a lot of hand pain in her bow arm, especially around the thumb side. What she didn't know was that she had actually mismapped where the upper arm joints were. No one had ever taught her that the upper arm bone, and I'll show you here, the, the humerus, this arm bone joins into the shoulder blade. 
here, not into the collarbone. But more importantly, no one had ever asked her where she thought that joint was. In all years of playing and studying and teaching, no one had ever thought to ask her, oh, how do you think your arm moves? So she was trying to move her bow arm from a place where it literally could not move. Imagine what that could do over a lifetime of thousands of bow strokes, the restriction in movement and the lack of flexibility and the lack of fluidity. So let me ask you, do you have a clear image of how the arm structure is designed and how it works? Do you have a clear image of what the four joints of the arms are or the three different rotations that are necessary for smooth arm movements, especially for string? So the rotation of the shoulder blade and the rotation of the humerus and the rotation of the forearm and the joints up here. Well, this violinist did not. So we spent an hour clearing that up, examining the skeleton, remapping her understanding of the arm structure and experimenting with different movements and different rotations. She began to feel a new, freer, more fluid and less painful way to bow the instrument. Now, this, for her this is gonna take time and practice, but she is well on her way to undoing the pain that was being caused in her hand and in her arm. But how sad it is that it took years for someone to help her figure that out. And how frustrating that she had to play with pain for so long. Hi Liz. So yesterday I also worked with a flutist who had a lot of trouble keeping the flute steady on his chin. He couldn't get a clear sound because the flute was always kind of bobbing up and down. What he didn't know, he was trying to figure out what is causing all this, why can't I keep my flute steady? steady. Because he didn't understand where the head balances on the spine. He, he didn't have this clearly mapped. He thought it was somewhere else and he had this whole stiffness in his neck, tension in the neck, which then led to tension in the arms and the hands. So he couldn't have the fluidity and the freedom of movement that he needed to allow the flute to rest easily because for flute players, this has to be steady. This is a sine qua non. If this isn't steady, nothing else is going to work. However, everything else should be able to move around that. So do you have a clear idea, a clear map of where the joint is between the head and the spine and how it works, exactly how it works? Most of us, I got to tell you, when I ask a room full of people about this, most of us are off by several millimeters and even inches. We think our head is attached down here somewhere and that causes a lot of stiffness. And what we don't usually understand is what a global effect that has on our whole body use, on our breathing, and on our technique. We have some kind of vague idea, oh I play with tension, I got tension in my neck, there's tension in my back, but we don't really know where it comes from or what to do about it. We say, oh just relax. Well, what does that really mean? And how exactly do you learn to relax? You can't just say, oh, I'm gonna relax, because there's so much going on when we play music. There's a million things going on in our brain. The whole brain, the whole body is all involved in playing music. But as musicians, we are used to the most delicate and subtle of understandings, right? Intonation, phrasing, expression. Is there anything more subtle than the movement of embouchure muscles, or the complex arm variations needed in bowing, or the refinements of the vocal apparatus. I could tell you example after example of musicians who just lack information about how to use their bodies freely and effectively to create the music they want, and how that lack of knowledge can create tension, pain, and even injury. Now, let me be clear, none of this is anyone's fault, not the student or the past teachers. It's just that our profession has never included this terribly important understanding in our training. 
And, you know, it's not the only thing, of course, that can impact our playing. Sometimes there are organic medical causes, and for that reason, we always need to have a thorough evaluation by a healthcare professional. But if your pain or limitation is caused by playing, chances are you're using your body wrong. Well, not really wrong, but just with incomplete or inaccurate knowledge about how it's designed to work. So if you want to learn more about this, you're going to want to know more about body mapping. And there are, oh, about 70 of us body mapping educators in the world. And here's what we do. In 50, about 15 minutes, I can help you uncover the cause of your pain and tension and help you chart a course to becoming pain-free. Now, I can help not because I'm some magical heater, healer or a cat or anything else, but because I'm trained, as are all my body mapping colleagues, to see how limitations in playing can be caused by a misunderstanding of the body. And I can watch you play and tell pretty much in 15 minutes what's going on, That's what are the misunderstandings that you have. So I'd love to hear from you what you think you need to know more about in your, the way your body works. What do you struggle with? Limited breathing, numbness in your hands, neck pain, or back pain, or tight arms, tension? Type it in the chat if you can, if you have access to the keyboard right now. I'd love to hear what's going on with you, what are the things that you struggle with, and we can set up a complimentary video session and see if the way you're playing is contributing to your struggles. So, if you find this useful, please like or love or wow and share because the more musicians we can help understand the importance of how to use our bodies, the more we're going to be able to reduce the high rate of injury within our profession, that 75% rate of injury. So tune in tomorrow. I'm going to teach you the third most important thing I've learned over the 20 years I've been teaching body mapping, and that is how our relationship to the floor can help us play more freely and without tension. So let me know any questions you have in the chat. I'll be following the feed, even on the, if you're watching the recording. That's cool. I'll respond to you. Thank you for taking this time for yourself. And have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.